Hello everyone, welcome to Raj Malhotra's IAPS. Today in this video session, we are going to learn about the world's first genetically modified rubber, which has been introduced in India. All right, so this particular week, there was a news that in India, we have introduced the world's first genetically modified rubber in Assam. So we are going to cover this topic and we are also going to learn on the sidelines about natural rubber and related statistics, which is very important from your prelims point of view. All right, so let's go ahead and learn about the first genetically modified rubber of the world as well as natural rubber in this session. If you look at why this particular topic, that is the world's first genetically modified rubber was in use, the reason is simple that the genetically modified rubber plant in India has been developed by the Rubber Research Institute and it was planted in Assam. Now, those of you who have done your geography, those of you who have done your environment, you know, and you will be having a lot of questions as how come rubber is getting planted in Assam? Well, this is the wonder of this genetically modified rubber crop that it can be grown or it can be, you know, cultivated in the Northeastern Himalayan region as well. And this is going to give a new economic lease of life to the state of Assam and this crop being developed by the Rubber Research Institute. So we'll talk about the Rubber Research Institute and Rubber Board in the coming few slides. Now, this rubber plant is actually, it is one of its own kind, which is exclusively developed for this region. That is the Northeastern Himalayan region. This Northeastern Himalayan region is not a natural region for growing rubber. All right, however, we have tweaked the natural rubber crop, uh, the genetic structure of the natural rubber crop such that the natural rubber can now be grown in the mountainous northeastern region of India. All right, so let's go and discuss further. Now, if we look at uh, the various aspects related to the GM rubber, all right, if we look at the various aspects related to the GM rubber, the GM rubber has an additional copies of one gene that has been introduced in the natural rubber and that gene is known as MNSOD. You have to remember this. This is a very, very important information from prelims point of view. This gene MNSOD stands for manganese containing superdioxide dimutase. All right, superoxide dimutase, manganese containing superoxide dimutase is the name of the gene which has been introduced in the natural rubber plant. And this gene is going to provide the natural rubber the capacity to tackle the severe cold conditions of the winter in the Northeastern India. This MNSOD that is manganese containing superoxide dimutase, it has the ability that it can protect the plant from cold weather and drought associated to the winters in India. And rubber being an equatorial commercial cash crop can now be grown even in the mountainous regions. Now, why we needed the genetically modified rubber? Well, see, natural rubber, it is actually a very important cash crop and it is used in a lot of commercial industries. If rubber crop can be planted in any region, that region witnesses economic growth. And because of this reason, we have won with uh, this uh, genetically modified rubber crop being introduced in the northeastern uh, mountainous region of India, particularly Assam. You see this uh, uh, natural rubber, it is actually equatorial crop and it is mostly grown in the warm, humid regions and primarily the Amazon forest. All right, it is not suited naturally for the cold conditions of northeast, but now by tweaking the genes and introducing the manganese containing superoxide dimutase, you are able to uh, create conditions for growth of this crop even in northeastern India. All right, going further, this growth of this rubber plant, it remains suspended uh, in this uh, northeastern India. If we grow the natural rubber and not the genetically modified rubber in this region, the growth remains suspended. All right, because in the winter uh, conditions, when there is less rainfall, when there is drying up of soil, the natural rubber does not grow and the remain and the growth it remains stunted and there's a long maturity period for the rubber plant in the colder regions. And because of this one particular very important reason, we need the genetically mo uh, modified rubber plant for adapting to the soil and weather conditions of Northeastern India. Now, 
Rubber Board of India, which has actually or which control the Rubber Research Institute. All right, and this Rubber Research Institute has created this global uh, genetic, sorry, genetically modified uh, uh, rubber plant. So this rubber board, it is located in the leading rubber producing state of India, and that is Kerala. It is situated at Kottayam, Kerala, and uh, this rubber board takes control of the administration uh, of rubber and policies related to rubber in India, and it is under the administration of Ministry of Commerce and Industry. Now, this board is taking control of the responsibilities of development of rubber industry in the country and assist and encourage research, development, extension, and training activities related to rubber. Rubber Research Institute is presently functioning under the supervision of the rubber board, and this uh, genetically modified crop has been developed by Rubber Research Institute on the guidelines of the rubber board in India. Now, Natural rubber, if we look at the commercial dimension of natural rubber, this natural rubber comes from the latex of the tree called as Hevia brasiliensis. All right, so this latex is the liquid that oozes out from the tree. All right, it oozes out from the tree and this latex gives rise to what is known as natural rubber. And the tree from where this latex comes out is scientifically called the Hevia brasiliensis or you can simply call it the rubber plant in the layman language. Now, rubber is a very, very strategic, important raw material and from minutest domestic items to the most sophisticated industrial equipment make use of rubber. And rubber has application in defense, national security, industrial development, commerce, everything. All right, and this is the importance of natural rubber. Now, if you look at the growth conditions of natural rubber, I have already told you that the natural rubber, it is an equatorial crop. And therefore in India, you see uh, natural rubber growing in the equatorial, the peninsular part of India. All right, now under special conditions, this natural rubber can also be grown in the tropical and subtropical areas, provided we have certain climatic conditions that satisfy the growth of this plant. For example, it requires temperature about 25 degrees Celsius with high humidity and moisture. It requires a good amount of rainfall of approximately 200 centimeters. It requires a soil type which is rich, well-drained alluvial soil. And, and this plantation crop also requires cheap and adequate supply of skilled labor. These are the conditions necessary for the growth of the rubber plant and the relative rubber industry in a particular region. Now, if we go ahead, all right, if we go ahead and talk about uh, the natural rubber and Indian scenario, the British were the first who established rubber plantation in India in the year 1902. And because the British were aware of the climatic conditions that were required, rubber was introduced in Kerala near the river Peria. Now, India is currently in the world the sixth largest producer of natural rubber. All right, all right. And India is having the production capacity of 6,94,000 tons in 2017-18 data, which is the latest data that is available as of now. If we talk about the leading rubber producer states in India, the top rubber producing states in India include Kerala, Tamil Nadu, and Karnataka. You see, all these are the southern states which lie in the tropical region or the climate of these states are tropical climate and they are best suited for you know growth of natural rubber fulfilling all the climatic conditions that we have already discussed now let's look at some of the important uh, uh, government schemes and global producers and consumers of natural rubber india has started the rubber plantation development scheme and the rubber group planting scheme which are aimed at increasing the rubber production in India and help economically the states which are dependent upon rubber, particularly the southern Indian states that lie in the tropical climate of the country. India has allowed 100% foreign, di uh, foreign direct investment in the plantation crops such as rubber, coffee, tea, and cardamom, palm oil, and olive oil tree. So rubber receives 100% FDI 
and it is a plantation crop. If we look at the global production, the major producers globally include Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, China, and sixth is India. So Thailand, Thailand leads the world in rubber production. Second comes Indonesia, then Malaysia, then Vietnam, and then China. Except for China, rest of four producers, they are the tropical countries. They are tropical countries. All right, they have equatorial to tropical kind of climate, and therefore these countries are well suited for growth of rubber tree. If we talk about the major consumers, you know that China being the uh, manufacturing hub of the world, China is the largest producer of rubber. Second comes India, followed by US, Japan, Thailand, Indonesia, and Malaysia. So these are the top consumers of natural rubber, and these six countries are the top producers of natural rubber. All right, so India is the second largest consumer and sixth largest producer. So India has a great potential. And you know that India is recently trying to replace or act, uh, act as an alternative to China in terms of manufacturing. And therefore, India is pushing very hard for growth of natural, uh, natural rubber in our country. All right, so that we can provide all the required assistance to different industries who are looking alternatives other than China to set up their manufacturing and India can be one of them. All right, this automatically makes rubber as a centerpiece plantation crop in India. All right, so with this, I'll conclude the session. I hope we have discussed in detail about rubber, natural rubber tree, as well as the genetically modified rubber crop. Why do we need it? What is Rubber Research Institute? We also discussed the Rubber Board of India. All right, as a take home point, I'm giving you a do it yourself exercise that please discover the national rubber policy of India, read it, prepare additional notes and keep it in your baggage because you never know UPSA might ask you the national rubber policy next time. So with this, I'll conclude the session. Thank you very much. Have a great day ahead. Take care and bye.